grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for today is from the Gospel lesson from Mark chapter 10, verses 35 through 45, which you have on your screen. Although, we will take a look at verse 32 and following just for a second. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. Teach us from your holy word. Help us to value your word as more precious than gold, sweeter than honey. Help us to be doers of your word and not hearers only. We ask in your precious name. Amen. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, a Catholic priest named Henry Nguyen was very successful in that he had written many books and he had sold seven million of these books worldwide. And yet at the last uh, ten years of his life, he went to a community where th there were these people that were um, had, had all kinds of uh, disabilities. And he took care of this 25-year-old who was brain dead. Now, here's a, a man with a, a great intellect, obviously, to, to write uh, it was uh, 39 books that he had published, and to be able to achieve the popularity that he was able to sell 7 million of these books. I mean, he was obviously a great uh, person of great intellect to be able to do this, and yet he takes care of this 25-year-old this man who's brain dead. I mean, why in the world would he do such a thing? Why would he humble himself to such a great degree to do this. Well, he claimed that he benefited from what he was doing more than the person who was receiving these services. Uh, just to give you an example of what he had to do, it took him an hour and a half just to get this young man ready in the morning uh, after a night's sleep. So, I mean, we're talking about basic service here. But Henry Nguyen uh, said this, What makes us human is not our mind, but our heart. Not our ability to think, but our ability to love. So think about that. What makes us human is not our mind, but our heart. Not our ability to think, but our ability to love. Now, we thank God for our intellect, but the point is, um, Henry Nguyen was using his love, caring for this person who needed care, and he believed that uh, these people who didn't have a great intellect still could love and still were worthy of his care, even though he, like I said, could be doing so many other things. But the reason I bring him up today is because it's a great example of service, of someone who could be doing so many more things in his life, but he chose to serve this person. He chose to serve. And that is what is so valuable in the eyes of Christ service. We see that in our text with these words of Christ. Whoever would be great among you must be your servant. Again, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. Yes, Jesus calls us all to serve. We see this in our text from Mark 10. We're going to look just briefly at verse 32 and following, because we see the context of what he's about to say. He explains in verse 32 and following, as he says here, the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes. They will condemn him to death, deliver him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And after three days, he will rise. He explains his service, why he's come, to suffer and die, to pay for the sins of humanity, to rise again. Now, what's sad about this, the, having the context here, is what is on the disciples' mind. After hearing that Jesus is going to do all this, how he's going to die, you know, they're not saying to him, Jesus, I'm, I'm so sad. I, I, I'm so si sorry that this is going to happen to you. Rather, look what happens right after this, verse 35 of Mark 10. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. 
And he said to them, what do you want me to do for you? He said to him, grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. So you see, here Jesus talks about the fact that he's going to die. And what are they thinking of? They're thinking of being number two and three in God's kingdom. Yes, Jesus is number one, but we want to be number two and three. They're thinking of themselves. How sad that is. This is contrasted, of course, with how Jesus thinks. He's always thinking of others. Just like, for example, if you came to the, our Wednesday service and you heard about Malchus, here this man is who comes out to arrest Jesus. Peter cuts off his ear. What does Jesus do? He heals the guy. He heals the guy's ear. Jesus is always thinking of others. Contrast that with the disciples. Jesus talks about his death, and what is their reaction? Well, can we have place number two and place number three, James and John say? And unfortunately, as we look at the sins of the Bible, we are not looking at the sins of the Bible and saying, well, I would never do that. Because we realize that we all are sinners, and we have probably done that before or, or could be tempted to do that. So the point is, we all are weak. We need to be watch out for this same. We need to watch out for this same sin ourselves, that we would be dragged into selfishness, selfishness rather than being a servant. Yes, they were thinking of themselves. They wanted this spot in glory. They were being selfish. But unfortunately, we all are made that way, just from the very beginning. How God made little babies. When the babies need something, do they say, excuse me, would you please give me something to eat? Wouldn't you have time? No, they go, ah! <laughs> right? They let you know that they need something. Of course, I'm not blaming little babies. I was one myself. <laughs> the point is that, um, you know, we're, we're made that way. We're selfish. That's called original sin. And so we're not thinking of others. We're thinking of ourselves. But the beautiful thing is, as God works in our hearts, we become more of a servant and less of a selfish person. And that is beautiful. As God works love in our hearts, the fruit of the Spirit, as Galatians 5 says, love, joy, and peace. God works this servanthood attitude into our minds instead. So these two disciples, they're thinking only of themselves. Well, how does Jesus respond? <coughs> Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. Now, what in the world is Jesus talking about? Well, he's talking about the cup of God's wrath that he had to suffer for sins, the baptism of death that he had to die for our sins. And in the same way, the disciples would suffer for Christ. They would even die for Christ. All the disciples died for Christ. They would not let go of their faith. They were told, quit preaching Jesus Christ or we'll kill you. They said, I will not stop preaching about Jesus Christ. So they killed him. Now they couldn't put John to death because God gave a miracle when they tried to kill him. But the point is that they were going to suffer for Christ. And sometimes we may have to suffer for Christ too. Now, oftentimes it's just simply some, somebody being rude to us uh, here in America. But obviously in other countries, people die for their faith. The point is, it's not always easy to be a Christian, but it's vital that we hold on to our faith no matter what. Not only for our own benefit that we hold on to our faith and, and are in heaven one day, but because it shows others how important the faith is, that we are willing to die for our faith. It shows how important our faith is, or that we are willing to take this guff that people are giving you because you're a Christian. You know, you're not going to be quiet about Jesus despite people being rude because the faith of Jesus Christ is real. So we don't back down from our faith. 
we stand strong because it is such a wonderful, amazing faith. It's such a wonderful, amazing thing to know Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now, verse 40. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. You know, what's interesting about this is we think about the cross of Christ. There was a thief on his right and on his left. Because where was the glory of Christ? Well, in many ways, his glory was shown. It was shown through his miracles, through his amazing teaching. It was shown, of course, when he rose from the dead. It will be shown in heaven when we see him face to face. But it was also shown at the cross. Here he is dying between two thieves. But his glory was shown because he was showing his love, his amazing love for us at the cross, his amazing love for the world, his amazing love that he was dying even for those who put him on that cross. What amazing love Jesus shows, shows to us at the cross. Verse 41, And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. Whoever would be great among you must be your servant. You see, the other ten, they felt the same way as James and John. They wanted those high spots, those glorious spots. And that's why they were upset with James and John. And we're the same way. We are so selfish. We're all sinners. But the good news is, Jesus became our servant. As he says, whoever and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. Jesus became the slave of all. He took upon himself the sins of the entire world, paying for our sin on the cross, then rising again, so that now through faith in Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. You have a glorious, perfect home in heaven above. Thank God for that. And so now we go on to serve others. For Jesus says, whoever would be great among you must be your servant. We go on to serve others rather than just thinking about ourselves. So, as you think about your career, you high school students or you people that are facing retirement, what are you going to do in the future? Well, of course, this, te this text is so important because we want to serve others. It's not all about the money. Of course, you want to be happy. You want to find something that, that you enjoy doing. But this is so beautiful because you will be able to serve God in some way in your career. And some of you now are already in your careers. You're serving God in your career, whether it's driving a bus or teaching school or whatever you do. Uh, you are serving God, and that is wonderful as you're serving others. And this is valuable. See, that's what Martin Luther found in the, in the Bible, that it's important that we serve and so that if your job is a lowly job, is still an important job because you are serving. And we think about the lowliness of Christ. What did he do? He washed his disciples' feet. He is the greatest teacher of all time, washing the disciples' feet. We read about this in John 13, verse 12 and following. After he washed their feet, he said, Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them, You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so. That is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Yes, we are to wash one another's feet, to care for one another, to do those jobs even that are lowly or difficult, serving one another. Now at the same time, we balance that out because we also are gifted. So we want to use our gifts. We want to take into account our interests as well. We see this in Acts chapter 6. Because here all these people were receiving this food distribution from the church. And the disciples said, we can't be distracted by this. We've got to take care of the word of God and prayer. So they put other people in charge of that. Because they had been with Jesus for three years. They knew what Jesus said. They needed to teach what Jesus had said. In Acts chapter 6, verse 1, we read, In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, 
The Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them. We'll give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. So the point is, we also are gifted, and also we want to especially get God's word out there. So the apostles, they needed to get God's word out there. They needed to be praying with people. And so they put others in charge of the taking care of the food, getting the food to the widows. So we do take into account our gifts and abilities in how we serve. So we're willing to serve where needed, washing one another's feet. But at the same time, we serve where we're gifted as well. And especially if we can share God's word with someone, that is the greatest thing we can do. Because then we are making an eternal difference in someone's life. Therefore, may God help us to be servants. For Jesus concludes in verse 45, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. We're not on this planet to be served, we're on this planet to serve, to love God and to love others, as Jesus said in Matthew 22, speaking of the greatest commandments, to love God and to love one another. But thank God Jesus became our ransom. He paid for our sin. He gave us forgiveness and eternal life. Thankful for what he's done for us, we go on to serve others. Danielle, would you come up here, please? It is St. Patrick's Day. And Danielle made me a card, a very beautiful card over there at Mott's. And it says, Happy St. Patrick's Day, Dad. I love you. I love you. Which I appreciate that. Thank you, Danielle. But I wanted others to enjoy this card because you, you did such a beautiful job with that. I want you to go show me this card. Would you, would you like to say St. Patrick's Day? Happy St. Patrick's Day, Dad? Would you like to say that to you? Well, I'm sure you do. Why don't you say happy St. Patrick's Day now, okay? Can you? Thank you, Dad. <laughs> Can you say it to him, Dana? Go ahead, say it to him. Okay. Uh, I knew it was in there. <laughs> I took a little good nap. Good. A little to get it out of her, but she did say Happy St. Patrick's Day because I knew she, she really wanted to say that to you. Anyway, the point is, here she is. She is serving you by displaying this wonderful art for you to look at and also just wishing you Happy St. Patrick's Day. The point is, she is behind other people intellectually, but she, she still can serve. And you can serve as well. All of us can serve. We can all serve in one way or another. And it is so important that we do serve. May God help us then to be servants of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Daniel. Remembering the words of Christ. But whoever will be great among you must be your servant. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.